Hello, this is Jack from tofluency.com, and welcome to this English lesson where you are going to learn idioms that come from poker, the game of poker. Now, when I was researching this video, I noticed that most of these idioms are used when it comes to business or international relations, politics, and also sport. But you can use these two in everyday English, and I sometimes say these things. And I'm going to give you lots of examples to help you better understand them. So let's start with number one, and it is this: to bluff or the act of bluffing. Now, when you are bluffing in poker, it means you make a bet, even though you don't have a good hand. So you try to deceive people, you try to trick them, which is what makes poker so much fun. And the deception is that you're saying, "My hand beats your hand." That is why I am putting all these chips into the middle. So this is bluffing when you don't have a good hand, but you still bet, and you're trying to deceive people. So you can also bluff. When it comes to politics or business or anything in life, really. Now, here is a good example. It's quite topical at the moment, talking about the Brexit deal, and it's the headline that says, "Is the government bluffing about a No Deal Brexit?" So, is the government bluffing about a No Deal Brexit? And the UK government is saying yes, we are going to go through with a No Deal Brexit unless the European Union makes a better deal. So this writer doesn't know if the government is telling the truth, if that they are really strong about this position, and they might just be bluffing, deceiving the EU to get a better deal. So bluffing is used a lot in everyday English, especially in politics. In business and also in sport, I love the next one: poker face. To have a poker face. So, in order to bluff somebody in poker, you need to have a good poker face, which means that you need to keep a straight face to not show your emotions when you feel emotional. So, let's say you are bluffing in poker. You have a terrible hand, but you make a good bet. You want to be able to keep a poker face to make people think that you actually have a good hand, or a poker face so that people don't know if you are bluffing or not. Now, the term poker face was made popular by Lady Gaga. You know the song, but 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 poker face, but but poker face. And I'll leave a link to that video in the description. And this is true in real life. You can use your poker face in real life. So outside of poker, to have a poker face means to have an expression which doesn't show what you are feeling or thinking. Now, actually, there was a, a newspaper article that says Lady Gaga maintains poker face after nearly falling during performance. So she fell during a performance, but she kept a straight face. She didn't reveal any emotion on her face and just kept on going. So it is used in everyday English. It's also used in boxing. So sometimes you'll hear commentators say, even though he got punched really hard, he has a really good poker face. He doesn't let you know if that punch hurt, if he is hurt or not. The next one is to have an ace up your sleeve. Now, in poker, this means you are cheating by keeping the best card in poker up your sleeve and then taking it out when you need to use it. Now, to have an ace up your sleeve means that you have some secret information or a secret skill that will give you an advantage and something that you can use at a later date. Here is a headline. That uses this in Virginia. The election stakes are high. We'll come back to stakes are high later, but Democrats see Obamacare as an ace up their sleeve. So 
the Democrats see Obamacare, a policy, as this secret thing or something that they can use at a later date in order to improve their situation. The next one is hold your cards close to your chest. Now, when playing poker, you don't want anybody to see the cards that you have because then they can use this information in order to beat you and to either fold or raise or bet. So you want to hold your cards close to your chest. And we use this in everyday English too. And it means to not reveal your intentions or plans or tactics. So don't tell anybody about what you intend to do. Here is a good example from a cricket headline. And the Ashes is a game played between Australia and England. And it says Langer keeps his cards close to his chest. And let's just read the first paragraph here, or this bit here. Langer was given few clues away as to Australia's likely selection at Monday's press conference. So again, the coach of the Australian cricket team is not revealing anything about who is going to play and how they are going to play. So he's not revealing the tactics or the team selection. He's keeping his cards close to his chest. The next one is to play the hand you're dealt. And in poker, this again, it just means if you get bad cards, then you have to play these cards correctly. For example, even if you get bad cards, you can fold your cards to play them correctly, or you can try and bluff. Now, in everyday life, it just means to make the most out of any situation. Even if you're in a bad situation, to make the most out of it. And it can also mean to play to your strengths. So to focus on what you're good at and do more of that. Here is a quote from LeBron James about a basketball coach, James Walton. You have to control what you can control and you've got to play the hand you're dealt. I think Walton played the hand as well as he could. So again, it just means that he did the most out of the situation he found himself in. The next one is when the chips are down. And this means in poker, when you don't have many chips, when you are running out of chips, a situation I've been in many times before. And again, this is all about mentality. It's about what you do when the chips are down. So when the chips are down means when you are in a difficult or maybe a dangerous situation. It's used a lot in boxing. How are you going to respond when the chips are down? When you are hurt? When you are finding it very difficult to beat somebody? And here is a headline from John Terry, the ex-Chelsea captain. When the chips are down, we can come together as a team. Which, I really like this quote because it's saying, when we are in a difficult situation, this is when we as a team can be more united, more bonded. When we find ourselves in a difficult situation, when the chips are down, we can come together as a team. The next one is to go all in. And this is when in poker you put all your chips into the middle of the table and you say all in. Outside of poker, it means to fully commit to doing something. So to fully commit to doing something. And here is a good headline which talks about a business owner. Owner of the copper closet went all in to start her business. Now in poker, as well as business, if you go all in, it is a little bit risky because you are risking everything you have. So when it comes to business, to go all in means to fully commit to something and you don't have a backup option. You don't have anything to fall back on. So you go all in, you spend all your money, you spend all your time and you fully commit to doing something. So it is risky, but sometimes in life you have to go all in. The next one is in or on the cards. 
if something is in the cards, let's just use in. And this means in real life, if something is likely or inevitable. Here is another Brexit example. ETFs in focus as a no deal Brexit may be in the cards. A no deal Brexit may be likely or inevitable. And the last one is know when to hold them and know when to fold them. So to hold your cards means to stay in that hand, to not fold. And then to fold is to say, okay, I give up. I'm not going to continue this hand. Now this phrase has been made popular by a song called The Gambler by Kenny Rogers. And he says, you've got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away and know when to run. You never count your money when you're sitting at the table. There'll be time enough for counting when the dealing's done. Now in everyday life, this is true as well. And again, if you go all in on something, then you might reach a stage where you have to give up on this dream. And knowing when to continue doing something and knowing when to quit doing something, there's a very fine line here. It's not easy to know. And you never really know if you make the right decision or not. So I think this is a really interesting one because there are times when we think this is too difficult, but we keep on going. And that was a good decision. But then there are also times when we continue doing something, even though it's not working. So you've got to know when to hold them and know when to fold them. Okay, so thank you so much for watching this lesson. I'll leave all the idioms in the description below and I'll link to the news articles that I shared in this lesson too. Now, if you found this lesson useful, then please like it and also share it with your friends. For example, if you are in a WhatsApp group about learning English, then share this with your friends in that group. Thank you so much for watching and I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.